Hello everyone and welcome back to Vulnerability Weekly. My name is Francesco and I'm your host for this episode. In Vulnerability Weekly, we analyze the weekly news uh, of the past week and the upcoming week and uh, what's hot in the news and uh, what you should be paying attention between cloud security, application security, infrastructure security, anything vulnerability specific. This week in particular, we touch on an issue that we've seen in the past with GitHub being exploited and the attacker leveraging the exploited O2 authentication token that is fundamentally credential to get access to a specific part of a system. Um, in this particular case was Heroku and Travis CI that were um, exploited uh, or the O2 token for those two uh, system were exploited. GitHub and uh, the various system have very quickly realized it uh, on the 15 actually and uh, went to repair the issue, uh, disabling fundamental accounts and um, acting quickly by enabling multi factor authentication. Nonetheless, during the investigation of recent, we discover more information around what's MPM. Um, a set of NPM account that were disclosed. And the GitHub is continuously um, updating the security research blog to actually discover more. We will cover as well weaponization of the recent attack on the F5 and VMware, VMware recent vulnerability with some disclosed PLC and few, few, other, uh, few other minor news. Um, and what are the upcoming trends on vulnerability? But without further ado, let me, as always, share our latest blog. You can find everything at www.upsecfinit.com dash security vulnerability of the week. And you can find also this under resources. <clears throat> so as I said, the very hot topic of this week is being GitHub with the recent uh, update on the security blog. The original disclosure and update was uh, from Mike on the April 15, where they disclose and follow on their security advisory. The, as, as I mentioned, the vulnerability that were exploited were affecting, uh, sorry, the, the old two tokens that were fundamentally leaked were affecting Heroku and Travis CI. And we covered this in, the, in one of the past issues uh, of the Vulnerability Weekend. Now, in the recent uh, discovery and investigation from uh, GitHub security team, they discover 100 NPM username and password and hashes that were leaked. And the hashes of those passwords were actually easy to exploit. Nonetheless, because um, GitHub has enforced uh, multi-factor authentication through email if multi-factor was not enabled um, or for who has already the second factor is that as an SMS or an authentication token, um, the exploit of those vulnerability will be, or, or those credentials will be very tricky or particularly tricky because uh, the, the order of the, um, particular repo will be notified of something happening. Nonetheless, it's important to stay alert. And Greg Ose is um, the researcher that is following uh, the security blog. And uh, there is a focus on his blog on what's happening. Now, from an infrastructure and network perspective, uh, I covered a couple of articles and interesting view of how applications uh, of how Microsoft Active Directory and Microsoft in general is strengthening the, is strengthening the security posture and security by default, um, with security defaults being adopted uh, more and more, and how to fundamentally enforce multi-factor authentication on all the users within a certain amount of time. This uh, has been a posture adopted by a lot of other vendors, including uh, G Suite, Google, um, on their technology. 
Now, an interesting new kind of topic is from Black Lotus Lab was on Linux malware or Linux related malware for uh, Windows um, Windows emulated environment or the other actual way around uh, in Windows Linux emulated environment and a few trending of at the, uh, from new fundamentally um, malware being discovered that exploit vulnerability on those specific libraries. Um, I mentioned a couple of. In the recent article, I cover more and more the recent vulnerability from VMware. There was a critical vulnerability, um, CVE, uh, as suppose nine, that uh, enable attacker to bypass almost completely the authentication. So it was very, very dangerous. And from that uh, exploit, um, VMware has released um, VMware has released of recent a uh, patch and an update. The system fundamentally affected by this where workspace one, identity management, and so on and so forth. And I covered the news because of recent, there was a POC exploited and, and discovered um, by um, Horizon 3 group. Nonetheless, the POC is focused on a specific um, on a specific issue and on a specific uh, on a specific system, specifically workspace one. Um, sorry, we realize automation versus workspace one and IDM that have different authentication system, but still maintain the same structure. Now, and just as a note, VM, there is a workaround available. Uh, it's fairly complicated and fairly impacting, but nonetheless, there is a patch out there available. So please update the system because there is more bots that are weaponizing the recent VMware vulnerability, but also the F5 vulnerability. We covered the F5 vulnerability in one or previous article of Vulnerability Weekly, but the at and uh, Alien Lab has discovered a more and more um, utilization and weaponization of this vulnerability at scale uh, by one of the botnet uh, discovered originally by Sikoronix. And the, the objective of the botnet is fundamentally to focus and attack systems uh, at scale for ransomware, DDoSing, and the gang or the group, KKSEC. Uh, is actively developing and, as you can see, updating the botnet. Now, this will be all for Vulnerability Weekly this week. Uh, as I said, there is more and more weaponization of attack. We've seen Spring for Shell, we Spring Lock for Shell in the past. Now we're seeing more uh, go-to-market or, or more externally facing system like VMware or F5. We've seen in the past also Raspberry, uh, vulnerability that exploited the QNAP systems, uh, and we covered that in one of our past issue of vulnerability of the week. Now, as always, the recommendation is if a system is exposed of the web, update it as soon as an advisory is out, or at least go and apply the mitigation and the workaround that the vendors specify. Try to mitigate uh, in the in particular case, all log for shell was um, a little bit easier to detect vulnerability and prevent the attack using and leveraging WAF system, even though it didn't prevent completely the attack to happen, uh, but it mitigated that issue. And having a, a clear asset register would have been helpful in that specific case because you would have been able to detect where the log for j or the spring for shell was specifically in. But we've seen more and more weaponization and um, easy exploitation of those vulnerability, more vulnerability of systems that are exposed over the web. So prioritizing those versus the ones that are internal is absolutely critical because attacker choose occasional attacking methodology. Nonetheless, this is Francesco Cipollone. I hope you stay safe. And this is Vulnerability Weekly. So uh, as always, 
mention in the comment the vulnerability that you want to cover what we missed what we didn't miss and i hope this was useful for everybody stay safe out there um, and patch your system see ya